definitely would not have been possible without him. He has put so much effort and so much of his heart and soul and sweat and blood into this. So let's have a huge round of applause for Pellet. What's up, everybody? So my name is Pele Ergang Leiden, um, and, <laughs> uh, and I'm from uh, the Coalition of Youth for Living Wages. Uh, it was the organization that planned this event and got all of the groups to come together. Um, I'm also from the youth movement Habunim Drawer, which is out big today. Um, and I also do work with 15 Now, which is out here today. Let's hear it. So as we all know, because everybody's been talking about it, minimum wage has become like the issue of, of the past couple months and everybody's been talking about it from the news, politicians, everybody and that's good but there's something that that I have to say to all the people that are talking about it. So I've been watching a lot of talking heads on on the media and and what they've been saying, what they've been asking is is now the right time to raise the minimum wage? Can America afford to raise the minimum wage? That's the question they're asking, is now the right time? I want to quote something that Martin Luther King said in his letter from Birmingham Jail, Alabama. He said, justice too long delayed becomes justice denied. We can't wait anymore. We can't wait. I've read the journals and I've read the reports from the academics and I thank academics and researchers for doing reports on the minimum wage. And we all, we all know the statistics we know that the average wage of a minimum wage worker is 29. We know that the average age if you're a woman is 35. We know that two thirds of minimum wage workers are women. We know that 28% of Philadelphians live in poverty. We know all of these statistics. What I'm here to say today is we can learn all those statistics, but that's not what is going to win us this fight. That's not what's going to win. It's you and us out here together that's gonna to win us this fight for minimum wage. It's hearing stories like the stories of Crystal and Justice and other low-wage workers and seeing them, putting a face, hearing them, not just reading about them. We need to see them, we need to know them, we need to stand in solidarity with workers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and in the U.S. Something else that I want to say, I see a lot of familiar faces out here today. A lot of people that have been at a lot of other protests, at the reinstate Dr. Montero protests. And, lot, and other things that are going on in Philadelphia. Something that I notice is we all show up to these protests and we all yell things together while standing next to each other, but chances are we don't even know each other. We don't even know each other's names, where we're from, why we're here. And if we're building a movement, we're gonna have to know each other in order to build that movement. So I'm gonna try to do something right now, a little uh, exercise of the human condition. I'm gonna ask that all of you turn to someone near you that you don't know Introduce yourself and say why you're here. 20 seconds. Let's do it right now. Yeah. I just, the statistics that he just said, 